Hello everyone. Welcome to Our Squad. You are watching episode 138. This is week two of our series on sharing the gospel. It's good to see you tonight. Now last week we began this new collection of videos about sharing the gospel, the good news about Jesus, the good news that the kingdom of God is here. And I think sharing the gospel is very important. Now I think a lot of us would agree sharing the gospel, that's very important. I think we can get caught up though in, ah, I'm nervous because I'm gonna try to go share it with someone or I feel like I should talk to this person about it, but I, what if they ask me a question that I just don't really answer to, or I feel like I don't quite know enough to share the gospel. That is the reason that we're doing this whole series right here. Last week, we talked about this, this question, how should we respond to the gospel? Go back and watch that video. If you didn't get to watch it yet, it talks about how we respond to it for the first time, how we continually respond to it, how we stand firm in it, all of the things. It was sort of just this introductory video about what is the gospel and how are we called to respond. And then in tonight's video, hopefully gonna be a shorter but big impact video on this gospel word that can be a little confusing, misleading, kind of hard to understand, and that is the word repentance. We can't have the gospel without repentance. Tonight we're gonna answer this question, what does it mean to repent? Are you familiar with that term? Have you heard it before? If so, what comes to mind when you think of the word repent, maybe some of you think of like a street corner preacher, he's got the bullhorn or he's evangelizing out in this particular place and he keeps saying, you know, repent, repent, repent. Maybe you picture someone like picketing or protesting an event or a thing or whatever and they got their sign out there and it says repent on it. Maybe this word for you is like associated with like hell or fire or like whatever. Honestly, kind of what I think of sometimes, I feel like this word word sort of gets used in these contexts and situations with legalistic people or people who are angry or people who are just not showing the love and character of Jesus. Now the temptation would then to be that we say, okay, well, I want to get away from that word because I don't want to be associated with those people. So let's just not talk about that word. Let's get away from that word and let me go do my Jesus thing over here. We can't do that though, because just because these people may have been legalistic or may have not really been showing the love of Jesus in the way they had been communicating. That doesn't mean we just throw out this very big piece of the gospel. And the reason we can't just throw that word out is because Jesus used the word repent all the time. Depending on which translation of the Bible you use, the word repent is in the Bible anywhere from like 70 to 100 times. And this wasn't just a word that Jesus used. This was a command. It is something he told us to do. And Jesus doesn't even just use the word. You've got the prophet Jeremiah. You've got Peter. You've got guys like John the Baptist. I mean, Matthew 3 verse 2 says, repent of your sins and turn to God for the kingdom of heaven is near. That was John the Baptist, even before the time of Jesus, using this term of repentance. This is pretty common throughout the entire New Testament. As Jesus is preaching and teaching, he's constantly saying, repent and believe, repent and believe, repent and believe. Now, we love the believe part. That's like, well, it's pretty easy, right? It's like, okay, I just start believing and trusting in Jesus. The repent part though, what really does that entail and what does it include? We're gonna look at one scripture here. Y'all can look at some more scripture in your group together, just one scripture. We're gonna explain a little bit more about repentance. We're done. This is Acts chapter two, verse 38. Peter says, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So it says, if you repent of your sins, you turn to God. Repent and turn to God. What is repentance? Repentance is change. A lot of us are pretty bad at change. We're pretty resistant to change. I mean, some of you, your seat gets taken in third period or at church and y'all are like, we are creatures of habit. We don't like change. We get caught and stuck in our ways and that makes it more difficult to change. But repentance boiled down to its most simple form is change. I repent and I turn to God. Okay, so what am I changing? So if I repent from my sins and turn to God, what actually changes? I mean, like what needs to change? The first one is my head. 
My head needs to change, meaning my mind, the way I think about certain things, the way I think about sin, the way I think about following Jesus, the habits and patterns of thoughts that go on in my head. Number two is a change of It's a heart. It's a change of heart. It's a change of attitude. It's not just the way I think about things. It's the way that I feel about things and it's my attitude and overall posture and presence towards sin and towards following Jesus. And number three, my hands. So I got my head, I got my heart. Now I have my hands because what good is it if I change my mind, change my attitude, and then do nothing? I gotta put my hands to work to make a change. Let's say I got this bad habit of biting my nails. I used to have that actually. Maybe that's your thing. I'm not here to call you out. That's just the one that I pick. And let's say in your head, you, you're you like, man, ugh, this is a bad habit. It's, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. It's not good for me. It's kind of gross, honestly. What good is thinking that and thinking those different thoughts if I don't actually change? I mean, like, does that matter for anything? Does Is there value in that? Does a change in mind matter? if there's not really ever a change in heart or a change in behavior. I don't know, something to think about. I think that's sometimes the way that some of us approach sin, we're caught up in some sin and some disobedience and we either get caught or we're convicted by the Spirit of God and, and our mind says, okay, yeah, I know that was, that was the wrong thing, you know, I shouldn't have done that, I, I hurt someone or I just have this conviction that that wasn't the right thing to do, that was breaking God's commands and, and I was, wasn't obeying there. But we never really have an attitude change. It was sort of just a, a mind change like, ah, yeah, I know that was the wrong thing to do, but it never moves down to the heart where it changes my attitude. And then it never moves into a behavior change of me actually turning direction and turning to God as Acts chapter two says. Repentance is not living the exact same way that we did before following Jesus. And now we just get the don't have to go to hell card just on top of that. No, that's not how it works. And it's not just living the same way we did before and changing the way that we think about God. That's not the way that it works either. And each stage of repentance, moving from the head to the heart to the hands, each stage we are more resistant to change because it's more difficult and it hurts a little bit more. It's, it's easier to change my mind than it is to change my attitude. It's easier to change my attitude than it is to start new habits with my hand, to get into new rhythms and behaviors with my hands. It's harder to do that and so we're more resistant to it. Repenting is changing direction. It's turning around. Okay, I was in sin. Okay, now I'm repenting and I'm turning to God. I'm turning away from sin and turning towards God. Some of us, if we're being really honest, we have thoughts about God. We think of him as our savior and as our Lord, but we are not turning away from sin. So how does this idea of turning from your sin and turning towards God fit in with your view and current understanding of the gospel? The gospel must include repentance. Repent and believe. Repent and believe. I think it's time for us to stop telling people and telling ourselves that we can stay the exact same and follow Jesus and believe the gospel. That's not the way it works. I feel like there's this sort of like growing thing in culture right now that's like, yeah, God just loves you, you know, however you are. You don't need to change anything about yourself and If anyone's telling you that, they're lying to you. Repentance is clearly a part of God's plan and design. It's clearly a part of the gospel. Repent and believe, repent and believe. We need to change. We all need to change. What is repentance? Repentance is turning our heads, our hearts, and our hands away from sin towards God so that he can forgive us and make us new.